Howdy folks, uh, here's another video with another example of how to do an optimization problem. Uh, so this time it looks like we've got a box with an open top to be constructed from a square piece of cardboard. So all right, I got a square piece of cardboard. I don't know. Guess that's square. And I'm I'm going to cut uh, squares off of each of the four corners. So I'm basically cutting off some portion of this. And I know you've seen problems like this before, but we're going to do something with it that you might not have done before. So we're going to cut out those corners and then sort of the sides will, these sides will fold up and these sides will fold up and you'll have a box with an open top. Okay, that's the idea there. So we have a box and open top. Uh, the square is three feet wide. So these are all three feet, right? Three feet. And we're cutting out these pieces that we just don't know. So those are just X. These are all X because these are all squares, right? You know, you can do them all. It doesn't really matter. You get the idea. And uh, find the largest volume that a box can have, that that kind of box would have. So we're kind of maximize this. We're going to try to find the largest volume. So I need to know how to find volume. Well, what does this thing look like, you know, after I fold it up? So it's, it's basically like this, right? Whatever. I might not have the dimensions right, but it's, it's an open top box with a square base and a, you know, whatever the height's going to be. Um, so we got to kind of figure out those dimensions to figure out the volume. We know it's length times width times height, but we don't have representations for those yet. So this, this square cardboard piece that we started with was three feet, you know, wide to begin with, but then we cut out X from this side and we cut out X from this side. So that means this distance that's left over is three minus two X. We take that full three, cut X, cut X, and what's left over? Well, whatever three minus two X is. Same thing here, three minus two X. That's gonna be from here to here. That's gonna be from here to here. So my square base is gonna be three minus two X and three minus two X. So then the question becomes, well, what's the height? Well, if you're folding this part up, right? This part right here is coming up vertically. So whatever X is, is now my, my sort of my height of this prism. So this is X. Again, I didn't draw it to scale. It doesn't matter. But those are my dimensions. So I had a three foot uh, length, cut out two X's, three foot length, cut out two X's, and folded up the X value to make my height. All right, so my dimensions are three minus two X by three minus two X by X. So then my volume is gonna be three minus two X, three minus two X, or three minus two X squared, however you wanna do it, times uh, X. And that's what we're trying to maximize. So that's the that's essentially the derivative and critical values that I'm going to be looking for. Okay. Um, I guess at this point, I mean, this one seems pretty easy to do by hand. So I'm just going to do it by hand. This is going to be 9x, right? I've got minus 6x and minus 6x, so minus 12x squared. And then plus uh, 4x squared times x is x cubed. So four plus four x cubed. So I'm just simplifying my volume formula to take my derivative. I can do a product rule. I can make this three minus two x squared and do a product rule, and then a little chain rule kicker is going to come into play. Doesn't really matter. These numbers are pretty easy to work with. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, take the derivative. So v prime is going to be nine minus twenty four x plus twelve x squared. Uh, looks like I can take out a three at least to start, right? So that's going to be uh, 3 minus 8x plus 4x squared, right? Okay. And I, I don't know, I guess most of us probably are going to look at this and say, why didn't he write it the other way? So 3, 4x squared minus 8x plus 3. Looks like we've got to do a little bit of factoring here. So let's sneak that in down here. That's going to be, uh, what, 2x probably, 2x. And then that's only got to be 3 and 1. Those are the only choices. I got to have two negatives or two positives. Well, they got to be negative because of that. And let's see, does that make eight? Um, 6x and 2x is 8x. Yep, good. So um, x is going to either be 3 halves or x is going to be 1 half. Well, let's take a look at our situation again. Right? Let's see if I can snap. I'm going to have to cut one of them off just for a second. So 3 halves or 1 half, right? So I'll write it up here. 3 halves or 1 half. Let's take a look. If x is 3 halves, that means I'm starting with three feet and I'm cutting out one and a half feet, right, for X, if, if this is going to be my X, or I cut out, and, or, or, and I'm going to cut off one and a half feet this way. 
If I cut off one and a half feet this way and one and a half feet this way, I'm not going to have much left over, am I? Right? That's literally cutting the entire thing. So that's not going to work. That's not a realistic solution for um, this particular scenario. Is it a critical value? Sure it is. And it's very critical, actually, because if I use it, then it's not going to work. So unfortunately, that's not going to make any sense. So it looks like my value has got to be one half. Let's see if it's really a maximum. So one half. In fact, um, I could really limit this, no pun intended, on you know what values I use. I'm not going to cut out zero. That doesn't make sense. So that's sort of like my end point. And I'm not going to cut off you know one and a half, right? I can't cut off one and a half because again, then I wouldn't have anything left over. So I can't cut off zero. I can't cut off one and a half. My values have to be somewhere in between. Uh, well, it looks like one half is my critical value anyway, so I'm pretty sure that's going to work out. Um, all right, so I got to check the values, right? So let's check like a quarter, okay? If I plug a quarter into here, right, that's going to be one half minus three is negative. That's all I care about. Is it positive or negative? So that's negative. A uh, quarter into here is going to be one half minus one. That's also negative. So that makes this whole thing positive. So I know for sure my volume is uh, my uh, volume is increasing in value between zero and one half. How about after a half, like one? Plug in one, I get negative. Plug in one, I get positive. So that's negative. So my derivative goes from positive to negative, meaning I'm going to have a maximum value at x equals one half. My maximum value is going to be whatever uh, you know happens when I plug in the one half. So I need to kind of do that. So let's see if let's see. Do I have room up here? Yeah, I can do it right here. So if x is one half, my volume is going to be three minus one, right? Can you see that? 3 minus 1 times 3 minus 1. I know I'm being silly here. I could just put those together, but whatever. Times 1 half. So that's 2 times 2 is 4 times a half is 2. Uh, they gave it to me in feet, so I guess that's cubic feet. That's going to be my maximum volume based on this scenario. So again, starting with a 3 by 3 square, cut out corners of value x. That leaves me with a picture like this. My volume formula is based on the dimensions of those sides. I simplified a little bit, took the derivative, simplified, 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 found those critical values, realized one of my critical values doesn't actually make sense in the context of the problem. However, I could have checked it. I mean, I could check it here. You know, if I go beyond one and a half, you'll see that it's not going to make any sense. And uh, so one half was the only one that made any sense. I could take a look at this on the graph and see what it looks like. I'm going to graph my original function again. My original function was... Uh, there it is right there, 3 minus 2x. I'll just, for simplification purposes, I'll put the squared, and actually I'll put the x in front so I don't screw anything up. So x times 3 minus 2x squared. And now when I set my window, I know I can't go below 0. I can't cut negative feet off of this cardboard, so 0. And I can't go past 1.5, right? I can't go past 1.5. It won't make sense in the context of the problem. I'll do another zoom fit, see what this guy looks like. That's a pretty good picture. And I can see my max is occurring up here. If I want to just check my value, if I do my you know, 0.5 for what I think it is, you'll see I do get a value of 2. You can't really see it blinking up there, but it's there. If I switch over to trace, it might be able to show it. And you kind of see it up there. See it moving. All right. Um, and that's basically that's basically it. Again, I could have graphed the derivative instead. You know, Just for, for the heck of it, I'll do that. Uh, so that's going to be my derivative was... Sneak that on there, yeah. My derivative was, where's the easiest way to put it? I'll do it right there like this. 9 minus 24x plus 12x squared. There's my derivative. Oops, I did a standard by accident. I didn't mean to do that. 0, what did I say? 1.5, and then I'll do a zoom fit. So here's my derivative. Watch. My derivative values are positive. Then they switch over to negative values. Remember, this is the derivative. So I'm going from positive to negative for my derivative, which means my original function goes from increasing to decreasing right there. Where is that, you say? Oh, glad you asked. Find the zero, right? You got to do left bound. So it's somewhere over here, right bound. And you could type in numbers for these two, but I'm so close already. And then guess. And there you go, 0.5. So my critical value I got is 0.5. Notice over here at 1.5, I do get a value of zero here, right? But it doesn't make sense. I can't go beyond that, right? It doesn't make sense for me to go beyond 1.5, and then I'm cutting into the opposite side of the, the cardboard. If I cut two feet this way, well, I can't cut two feet that way, right? So that's why it should stop at 1.5.
Okay, and that's a little bit more complex of a problem, but that's how optimization works. Uh, hopefully, you know, I know I, I didn't quite sneak it all in the window as best I could, but if you, you know, pause and rewind or whatever, you should be able to see everything. Okay, all right, so that's that kind of problem. Good luck. See you later.